Hi folks, welcome to Weld.com. Hey, a while back I was doing a video and I think I piped off and said something about Texas TIG. We got a lot of comments on it. And I know there's other nicknames for it. And uh, so anyway, we got to do a video on Texas TIG. <clears throat> and essentially what this is, is using two rods to fill in a pretty nasty gap. That's really all it is. Two stick welding electrodes. So I'm going to be running this uh, 332nd 1109. Oh, wait a minute. That's 6011. Uh, I'm going to run two of these 6011s in here and just, this is eighth inch material. It's thin. So this would be like filling up a gap. 6010, 6011 are both cellulose rods and they have a violent digging type of arc. Again, I'm simulating this like this is the only rod I have, so I haven't forced to do this, and this would be like a bad weld or a bad fit. Eighth inch material, 3 sixteenths gap. If I strike an arc on this, it's gonna get kind of violent. It's gonna kind of blow up. There's a couple of techniques about filling up gap. I could create a series of tacks. I could hit this and tack it, bridge it together, stop, let it cool, keep doing that keep doing that and I'm really not building anything up so I probably do I probably do this set of coupons uphill where I'm striking an arc and adding filler wire let it cool and it'll it'll get a little reinforcement and that way I can just kind of clean it off and I'm finished and I'm done and then I have another piece over here of some thin angle iron into a piece of inch and a quarter square tube that's eighth inch wall as well, which that'll help me a little bit, but again, pretty good size gap in there. If I just welded it with this violent digging arc, regardless of what I've got going on with the machine, I may blow this up. So there's a couple of methods of filling up gap. We could run a couple of stringer beads along the edge of this on, on the thicker side, like on the tubing. Let that cool, bring it out a little bit, and then bridge it, or we could use this Texas TIG method where we're striking an arc and adding another wire to it. So let me get my hood on, we'll demonstrate this, have a little fun. One of the cool things about the Rebel 285 is it has some parameter guides inside or information. So I'm going to go up in the menu to stick information and select that. It takes me over to parameter guide and if I click that then I have settings for various rods and rod diameters. So I'm going to scroll. I'm using 332nd 6011 and it suggests an amperage range of 60 to 85. And that's cool information, except it didn't take into consideration I'm a bad fitter and I'm forced to make this weld on some pretty horrendous gap. So I'm going to like violate this parameter guide here and I'm gonna set my machine at 40 amps. I'm gonna go way low. I, I wanna be able to strike an arc and I wanna weld hot enough to fuse the material, but if I welded at 60 amps with that kind of gap, I'll guarantee I'll just be blowing it up big time. So I wanna, I wanna go on the low end and be able to control this, add some filler wire. I do need to point out that this is non-critical applications, okay? I've, I've put, some tank shells together with it. Again, that's non-pressure, non-critical. And I did it from the inside of the tank simply because the inside of the tank was gonna be coated with a stolastic and then insulation and all that. The outside of the tank, we went and dressed and completed a weld and made it look really nice. But again, just to get two pieces stuck together that had some gap in it, I, I, I would never do this on anything critical. Uh, and again, a couple of nicknames for it, Texas TIG, Tijuana TIG, I've heard it called numerous things. So, all right, so my intent here, I'm gonna start out at the bottom on this, on these real thin coupons here, and they've got pretty good sized gap in them. I, I'm gonna initiate the arc and I'm gonna put the extra filler wire, the extra stick welding or, uh, rod in here at the bottom and just kind of fuse that. I'm going to try to keep going, but if I see it's going to blow up or fall out, I'm going to quit, let it cool.
Okay, I kind of found out real quick here <clears throat> that my preferred method here when I got into it, I was trying to keep it all in there and keep going. But I did better by leaving the filler wire on the front edge of it and striking the arc repeatedly, letting it cool, letting it fall in there and build it up a little bit. So the, the weld is made, it's a little round and tall. I could go, probably go sand that off real quick. I really don't care what the backside looks like. Again, this is a non-critical application. I'm at home, I'm building something, I'm hobbying, I'm doing some goof off work and I didn't have quite enough material and I had a gap and I had to weld it. So in any event, that's one method of doing thinner metals. Turn the machine way down use the arc, use an extra piece of filler wire, bridge the gap, fill it up. We've got enough material re reinforcement on here, we could probably go clean it off one time and, and finish it. I think if I tried to weld maybe even downhill on this, I think it would open up a great big keyhole. I would have to keep pausing, striking an arc, dabbing, pausing, letting it cool, all that kind of stuff. So to me, this seems a little bit quicker and that's where I've always used it. So we get comments and questions a lot. Well, what happens if you take the filler wire off of the electrode and just run another piece of filler wire? I don't know that that would be any different than grabbing a piece of TIG wire, but we'll certainly take this off and experiment and see what it looks like to run a bare wire in there. So we took the filler wire, or I'm sorry, we took the coating off of the uh, stick electrode and just ran it as a bare wire. And actually, uh, when I struck the arc on that, I was able to just keep feeding it in there and it's got a little bit different profile to it. A little smaller weld, it, but it didn't penetrate as well. And we're not looking for penetration in the first place. We're trying to bridge this gap. Again, I, I need to keep saying this is non-critical application. Some of you may be artists at it and use it all the time. I don't. I've used it in the past just to kind of get by, but I've also taken pride in fitting stuff a little more exact. How about we go into this piece here and I'll do a couple of different methods where I'll run a couple of stringer beads on one side of this tubing to bring it out and then bridge the gap. And then in another section, I'll do the, the uh, Texas TIG on it. On this second scenario, <clears throat> I'm going to take the same rod, 330 second 6011, and I'm going to run a series of stringer beads across this edge here. Even though this is a violent digging type of arc, I've got it turned down. I want to bring that one of these surfaces toward the other. I'm not real interested in doing it on the eighth inch angle iron because that's going to get heat soaked immediately. I'm thinking the heat is going to be better on the piece of tubing here, especially on this rounded edge. So I'm going to go at this, try to build this up, bring it toward me a little bit, close up that gap, and then I can just weld it as normal, as normal as can be, I should say.
I ran a couple beads across here and, and gradually closed up this gap. I feel pretty comfortable about striking the arc and tying the thin piece of angle iron in to my series of stringer beads across here. I'm still turning my machine is still down at 40 amps. So I'll try to just kind of butter this in and just bridge the two of them and leave it fairly flat. Okay, on this weld here, I ran a series of stringer beads across there just to fill this up a little bit. And then I went ahead and bridged them across. I used a kind of a modified J just to, just to make the weld metal wash across. <clears throat> I'll go up above this and separate. And uh, we'll try to run a little Texas TIG in there on this one here. And I will probably go away from you or uphill on this one. So there's a little demonstration on Texas TIG or a couple of methods of filling gap. Texas TIG, Tijuana TIG, Florida fill. I don't know what to call it. It's just a, using two, two electrodes, one you're stick welding with, the other one you're feeding in here. Over here <clears throat> on this side, we ran a series of stringer beads on the shoulder of this piece of tubing and brought the material toward us and then we bridged the gap. Over here, I was able to use the Texas TIG method kind of <clears throat> melt the wire, bring it back down and just make a finished weld as I was going along, which was a lot quicker. And that'd be one of the reasons to do it. So, you know, again, I need to stress, this is, this would be non-critical. You get good at this. And I know some of you have used this in various places, but you know, you think about it, use your amperage correctly. You're on thin metal. You don't want to blow it up. You got gap. You got everything working against you, but you set this up right and you can kind of finish out a weld in less time and, and be able to sand it and clean it and go straight to finish work. So in any event, that was uh, just a little quick lesson there. Uh, you know, again, non-critical applications and appreciate your comments really appreciate you subscribing to the channel really appreciate that please check us out on instagram and facebook as well thanks for watching weld.com